Gordon, I know you're a perma bear uh, on Tesla, but you've actually made a slight upgrade, just two bucks. <laughs> yes, I, so I don't I, know I, what to make yeah, of it. Tell yeah. us why this slight upgrade. Yeah, so I mean, so I wouldn't say we're a perma bear. I'd say we're realists. Listen, Tesla has a market cap that's more than the next 16 largest automakers in the world combined. Their market cap is more than the next 16 largest automakers combined. However, they sell just 2% of the cars that those automakers sell. And in and, and 2Q, their sales were down significantly from about 310,000 cars to about 260,000 cars. And in 1Q, before their plant shut down, their sales were flat. So their sales have stopped growing. So we just think Tesla is grossly overvalued. And I want to get into what he said um, at the shareholder meeting. But not only are they, they grossly overvalued, but they have no moat. They have no technological security from the battery perspective, from a real world range perspective. They're last in autonomous driving. Um, and quite frankly, the other cars out there are equal to better, to better than them in interior range and just overall technology. So I think Tesla is looking at real problems. Uh, we've had this before. I mean, you've been you've been saying this over and over again. But you know, I'm hearing you. I understand where you're coming from. But it sounds like you're just looking at Tesla from just a, a just an ordinary car maker. But you know, when people buy into Tesla, they're buying it more than just a car maker, isn't it? I mean, they're buying it because you know they've got their own software architecture. They control their own programming. Uh, they can actually they are they actually the internet of cars. So why aren't you looking at that <laughs> aspect uh, of the of the business model? Yeah, that's a great point. So. Everybody who says that, in our view, are dead wrong. And let me explain. <laughs> Last year, 95% of their revenue came from selling cars. 5% came from an energy division that has a negative gross margin. So they are a quintessential car company. And again, if you look at full self-drive, autonomous driving, uh, Cruz and Wamo have driverless cars on the road right now. They're being paid for. Tesla? does not. Tesla is last in full self-driving. You look at battery cells. What he just said at the shareholder meeting, I think the biggest takeaway from our view was he significantly downplayed in-house cell production. That is huge. They did a whole battery day on the idea that they were going to have in-house battery production. It looks like he's throwing that out the door. Look at the Cybertruck. He just said at the shareholder meeting. We said the day he announced the Cybertruck that it wasn't going to be a $40,000 car with the range he said it is. Now he's agreeing with us. So this isn't a all-in-one company. This is a car company. 95% of revenues from selling cars, 5% from a negative gross margin energy division. So everybody who says that is just, in our view, wrong. Okay, Gordon, I just want to hmm. clap back on a couple of the things. One, if we're talking about their previous performance, we're paying for future performance. So if you look at it from that perspective and you look at all of the divisions that they are currently in, there is some significant upside there, particularly because of their... I would say, exposure to a lot of subsidies and credits that are going to be flying out the door from governments around the world to hit their 2035 target. So it, is it, isn't it more about if you're buying Tesla and a lot of the people that probably are buying Tesla, they're looking at it over the next 10, 15 years and not necessarily thinking about how 2023 is going to be? Yeah, that's a good point. But when you look at Elon Musk, who has a problem, in our view, with the truth, and you think about since 2016, he said his cars are you know, going to have full self-driving, and we're now in 2022, almost 2023. I think to give him credit for what he says he's going to do uh, is way in the past. And look, in the U.S., from Q1 to Q2, I'm going to look at my notes here, their market share fell from 72% to 63%. From Q1 to Q2 in China, their market share fell from 11% to 9%. In Europe? 18% to 9%. The point is, the competition, everybody says you're saying the competition is coming. It's here, and it's taking significant share. Their June sales in China of 18,000 cars were a huge disappointment. And, and, and he just said at the shareholder meeting, they're still targeting 1.5 thousand cars delivered. He'd have to deliver 580,000 cars in Q4, right? That, that's more than their entire capacity. So, we, again, we think he may be, quote, unquote, selling wolf tickets again. We don't think they're going to hit this target he put out there. Um, they went on, went on, the, on the one Q call, he said they were going to see sales potentially grow quarter over quarter. We put out a note that said we thought, in our view, that was a lie, and clearly it was. Their sales went from 310 
to 260. So to give him credit for future divisions that he's not in, I think we're way past that because we've seen him promise us something since 2016 that they are last in right now. So I don't think that you can, can give him credit. It, 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 is, uh, does that make sense? To an extent, but at, the, but at the same time, when you look at what they've been able to achieve, you look at the fact that they're going to be building out another factory, he just doesn't want to tell us where. And then you look at, say, for example, Lucid, that are struggling to produce even 300 cars, and there's so much emphasis on what potentially all of these other car makers can do. And I can understand the comp between comparing Tesla to a relative car company, but they're not just that because that's not just what's reflected in the price. So that's where I'm thinking the disconnect is that in the price that is now, even if it is elevated, people are pricing in the other parts of it. But that would suggest it's overvalued, right? If the stock price is pricing in all this optimism, yet the company continues to get 95% of their revenues from selling cars, I would argue that suggests the stock price is overvalued, not undervalued. You can't make that, that leap of faith. You got to see real results. And with respect to comparing them to Lucid, I think that's significant cherry picking, right? You got to compare them to BYD, which in the month of June in BYD, the month of June in China, BYD sold 162,000 NEV cars in China. Tesla sold 18,000 cars. You got to compare them to uh, VW, who now is selling more cars, EV cars, than they are in Europe. You got to compare them to Ford and GM, who are investing billions okay. of dollars in capacity okay. in the U.S. To, to compare them to Lucid is, is not fair, in my view. Mm -hmm. Lucid okay. is a new startup automaker. Uh, Ford and those other guys are established. They have revenue streams that are profitable. Okay. I think they're going to eat Tesla's lunch.